We are back on the Jeep. Truck projects are done. YJ projects are back in full swing. Alex is here this morning and we're gonna get this hard top off and keep working on the cage. This video is gonna kind of be more fast paced, less talking, more working. We're gonna keep getting this cage built. Hopefully by the end of this video, we'll have most of the main structure going and uh, we'll move on from there. So jumping right into it, let's go. You guys watched the previous videos, you know, uh, once we got the once I got the hard top on, I did the B pillar, the B pillar header bar, and the windshield header bar, all with the hard top on. And I haven't got a chance to see it like this. So it is looking awesome. The next step now that we're gonna be working on is we're gonna work on a harness bar. So we got to figure out height wise of the harness bar and the degree you got to bend it to go back around the seats to give me the room to uh, be able to recline these seats a little bit. We just know that you don't want it too low because like Alex was just telling me, you know, you get into an impact and it presses you down, you can compress your spine. Not good. I already got back problems. So does Alex. So, uh, trying to figure it out. I think you want it level, as level as possible with your harness opening on your seats, plus or minus 10 degrees up or down. So we're gonna do some research, confirm that, and then start cutting and bending this harness bar. So Sam came and Scott's here. So we got some more ideas, more tape. And then um, that bar, we're trying to figure out the harness bar and whatnot. And I know I want bars like that, where that piece of tape is. So I think what we're gonna do is put those bars in first and then we can get the harness bar situated after that. That's where we're at. So let's finally cut some tubes. Our B to C connecting bars tacked in place, which you guys just saw. And we just measured what we think should be enough tube. It looks like it it's for our harness bar now. And then we just did some, what is that? Our throat line, Sam? Is that what that's uh, called? Call that. Center line, throat line, whatever. Reference line, some sort of Sharpie line, thingamabobber, marked center mark, and then marked our marks where we think our bend should begin. So we're gonna go ahead. We figured out where we want it to bend from where the seats are at the furthest point back. We want it to bend at like a 45 to go in. And then we're gonna kind of actually have the tube come up and meet to give it some style points. I mean, I'm overhanging a, a bit. So we got both beds in the harness bar. Uh, for some reason, unbeknownst to us, I don't know how we did it, but we lost four inches somewhere in here. So I think we can still make it work. 
We got the bends. We had to jump the, the degree of the bend up to 50 degrees. Hello, I'm back. All right, just got home from work. Just put a glass of whiskey in me. And now it's time to try to see if we can salvage the uh, harness bar. It might work, let's see. So we have it right over here. And just to show what I'm talking about, you can see that side is much longer than that side. I have a feeling I'm gonna need more whiskey after this. Let's go check it out. So there's kind of my idea. You can kind of see, I want it to come, actually Sam gave me the idea. I was originally gonna come straight out and around, but he gave me the idea of coming up and down and I really like it, it looks cool. It's just a really weird notch to try to figure out. So that is what I just notched. Obviously have a lot more to go. We are hitting the seat, but that's the furthest back that the seats will be so i have a lot of figuring out to do probably a lot of uh massaging with the flap wheel and the grinder you guys don't want to see that so i'm going to go work on that and then hopefully i come up with something and don't mess this tube up and then i'll show you guys what i do well bummer i couldn't salvage that tube unfortunately i mean looking at it right here it looks awesome it is at the right height I think it needs to be. It, You would think that that's good. Even walking over to this side and looking at this notch, I have, if you can even see, like, I mean, right now the magnet's keeping it, but this uh, notch, not too bad. That's a weldable joint. Like, I could make that work. Looking across there, like, I like it, but, because we lost those few inches in that bend, me trying this notch, I, it's just not long enough. Unfortunately, that tube is bleh. But at least I can cut it there and cut it there and then use the middle section maybe like up there or one of those bars or something. So it's not a total loss, just a loss of time. This cage is taking me forever. But hopefully it'll be cool. It's starting to look cool. I like it. Let me know what you guys think. I want to go eat dinner, do something. I'll be back down to work on this. I had hopes to have an extra set of hands or some help redoing this harness bar. Unfortunately, it does not look like it. So I'm back to doing it by myself. So I messed up another piece of tube, which I didn't show you guys because I was super frustrated and I didn't want my anger to come through on camera. But now I'm happy because third time's a charm, with Lauren's help, I got the bends exactly, what's this word I'm looking for, the same, just exactly the same on both sides, so like, the bends are matching, the lengths are the same, figured it out, what I didn't do was flip the tube 180 and bend, uh, I tried sliding it through and yeah, I talked to my buddy Matt and he said that's not how you do it, so I messed up twice, fixed it the third time. Well, we ended up going, what was it, hon, 70 degrees? 70 degrees, yes. So, originally, when we were first doing it with that first, we were at 50. To get it proper and correct, we had to go all the way up to 70. But now the tubes fall directly at the center of the B pillars. And you can see how much room I have. So now I can just cut and get the notch to take up to get it at the right distance from the seats that I need it. We're getting somewhere. Just didn't feel like recording all that because that was what, like? That was like three or three, four hours. Yeah, three or four hours of yelling, swearing, and scratching our heads. But we figured it out. So, like I said, my goal today was to get this harness bar welded in the Jeep, and we're doing it. Okay. Let's not mess this up.
So this video is just turning into me consistently failing and messing up. We thought we were good, Lord help me, and then I go ahead and make one notch and screw that tube up too. So, awesome. yeah. The notch is actually like awesome and great, but what I thought I accounted for when we did the bends was the notch and taking up. I guess I didn't account for enough because now this side, as you can see, isn't notched and it is too far in. So that means this tube is too short, just like the other two that I messed up prior. But the one thing that this tube is that the others aren't is symmetrical. So both of the uh, bends are symmetrical and match. So instead of messing up another whole piece of tube, hear me out, idea. I'm going to cut said tube in the center, sleeve it, spread it so it fits, get my notches, weld it around, call it a day. And then my X bar from there to there, there to there, here and here. So it's gonna be four tubes going to the center of that tube that's sleeved. It's gonna get welded all up. It should be plenty strong. My only problem now with sleeving this tube is I don't have any inch and a half outer diameter tubing to fit on the inside of that inch and three quarter tubing. So that's my next problem. And with today being the weekend, all the metal shops are closed, Home Depot, Lowe's don't have it, Tractor Supply doesn't have it. So I can't go out right now and buy my inch and a half tubing I need. So inch and a 16th socket courtesy of harbor freight that actually fits perfectly inside the tubing and it's nice and snug so i'm going to use that socket i'm going to cut that get the notch set up get them fitted perfectly use that socket as a placeholder so i can keep making progress until i can find inch and a half tubing to actually sleeve it and weld it up that's where i'm at now pretty much my whole day has been wasted on doing this one piece of tube. But I said I'm getting it in at the end of the day, and it'll kind of be in because I don't have any material to weld it in, but it's getting there. Cut that bar we worked on all day and a half. Nice. Uh. Hi. Well, so, came to Sam's house because, uh, He's our savior and he has an inch and a half that I can use to sleeve that harness bar and I can continue working yeah. this weekend. So thank you, Sam, because I really did not want to wait much longer. <laughs> oh God. So this is what Sam has for me. Talk about freaking beef. This is what your track bar? That is what is left over from my track bar. Inch and a half, 250 wall beef. Yeah. Um, it's like a leftover 20 inch section or so. <laughs> I'm gonna have like the strongest harness bar in the world with this being sleeved inside 120 wall DOM. And then here's my uh, winch plate that you guys probably saw from previous videos. Remember there used to be a fair lead mount here, but Sam cut it off and welded it to his bumper here. Oh. Beep. I told them I pulled it on, I never did. <laughs> <laughs> so that looks awesome there. And the reason why I didn't need it is because I'm actually gonna use this plate and recess my winch into my frame. So that's in a future video, you guys will see that. But now we got this and we're gonna go beef up that bar. Can you guys do me a favor, since Sam's helping me out, make sure to go to his channel. Ooh, yes. 
<laughs> yeah, uh, what is it? Sam, just the channel Sam Matter? Sam Matter's the channel, and then Instagram's Hunk of Junk. Hunk of Junk. I'll put it in the description below. But show Sam some love because he's hooking me up and helping me out. Yeah. So. Yeah, come check it out. We got the whole build series for my TJ on there, um, at least where I started off filming from. So, uh, if you want to see more of that, go check it out on my channel. Yeah, and then eventually, like you guys have asked before, I want to do a walk around on this Jeep here. Once he makes a little bit more progress, I'm going to come over to Sam's house here. We'll do a full walk around, talk about the specs, talk about everything he's doing, future plans, all that fun stuff. We'll see you then. All right, now go to Sam's channel, hit that subscribe button, and then we'll go back to the garage. Alex came over, so now I actually have an extra hand to help me with this stuff. Uh, we got that 250 wall, freaking inch and a half to sleeve this. So what we're gonna do, take these tubes out, flush up these edges, drill some holes, that way we have some plug welds on this. I'm gonna make a little collar out of like a half inch of the inch and three quarter to as a center mark to fill up a lot of the space and then there'll be two welds on each side of that collar and then all the other tubes will come into the joint super strong especially with this it's going to be the most over engineered freaking harness bar in the world so yeah about 10 inches of the inch and a half i made a one inch sleeve uh we got that and all right it's good to label your tubes. Put that in there. Top left. Put that in there. And as you can see, I have all my holes drilled. So once I get it all set and the edges beveled, so plenty of room to fill in weld and do plug welds. So, yeah, now I get it up in, space it out, see how she looks. There's my center mark on that inch and a half, so that means I have five inches going this way, five inches going this way into this tube. I have two nice beveled gaps to fill with weld. In and... <laughs> oh, God. Shit out of my floor. Uh, all right, finally, harness bar is in. Uh, took me the longest out of anything in the cage. But next, all this blue tape is what we're gonna do. So, plan is this center bar. I'm gonna find center on this tube and that tube. Center marks. Do a straight tube across from there, and then that will allow us to find the angles and marks and just keep working. So we're gonna do center tube, V-bar.
another day down in the garage. So this video has been full of ups and downs, starting with that harness bar that was just, <laughs> put me in a bad mood at first because just how much I've messed up and how long it took. But I really did not see this much work getting done in this video after that harness bar taking so long. But I've had a lot of help from my awesome friends throughout this whole video between Sam, you know, Sam, Scott, Alex helping me get measurements and get everything started in the beginning. And then Sam coming in clutch with that piece I needed to sleeve the harness bar. And then Alex is consistently coming over to give me extra hands. So thank you guys. I wouldn't have got this far without you guys. So again, you guys are awesome. I was thinking about ending the video here, but since we're this far, I'm just gonna keep working. And this video might be a little bit longer now, but I wanna get the rest of the tubes in and finish the main structure of the cage in this video. So with that, I wanna give you guys a quick view of the X-Bar that you guys just saw Alex help me get put in. And then we're gonna add, I think there's like four more tubes I wanna add in. And then like main structure is gonna be done. So, We'll do that, then we'll close out this video. So, quick view of the X-Bar behind me. It's freaking sick. Like, I think that turned out awesome. I love the lines. It just freaking fits perfectly around the seats. I have clearance. The seats are probably you know, like I said, towards the beginning of the video, the most reclined that I would probably drive and maybe one click past that. So that's a driving position. And then from there, a wheeling position is going to always be more forward and straight up. So uh, I think that is perfect. And I'm, again, super happy. Some of my copes aren't quite the best. But I think those are all joints that are weldable. Once gussets are added in, it's just going to be super strong. So today, this morning, Luna and I, I think we're going to finish out these roof bars. So uh, our tape lines we had previous in the video, I got to throw another tape line back up so I can use that as a reference to find my angles. But... I pretty much want to add my bar from here to there on both sides. And then I want to add a bar from this bend to here just to kind of tie it all together and just add that extra strength. Plus that bar, I'm going to, I have ideas to add a future component that I'm going to need to locate somewhere once the fuel cells in. So that bar might help me do that. Enough talking, we're gonna get to work. I wanna get those roof bars in first, then we'll work on those. And the main structure of the cage will be done. Side note also, humidity in Pennsylvania, not my friend. I have a lot of uh, bare steel on this Jeep. And as you guys can see, humidity is killing me. So I'm gonna have to clean that up before, but eh. It is what it is. If you guys see rust, I know it's rusting. For anybody curious that didn't watch when I bought the tubing, which is, I don't even know how many videos ago, I bought 108 feet. And that was kind of just a guess. And that was actually everything I needed to do this cage. Now, um, again, if you watch previous videos under there, I used some of that tubing to strengthen the rear of the frame. So that is included in that 108 feet. But if you guys are looking at doing a similar style cage for your YJ, that's kind of a ballpark of around what you need. I'd probably recommend going a little bit more uh, just in case. I still need to buy some more DOM tubing, unfortunately, because I plan on making my own fenders. Uh, I'm gonna do something custom up front with a recessed winch. So I'm going to need some DOM for that, but cage wise, everything here, 108 feet 
pretty much got me exactly where I needed to be. Now, early in the video, when you saw me mess up that harness bar, what, twice? Those pieces that I thought I messed up, that is actually the two top bars on the X bar there. So that bend and that bend are those 50 degree bends that I thought I needed for my harness bar. I was able to salvage that and use them there, so that was perfect. I lucked out. That was some really dumb luck. But yeah, that's where we're at. We got the roof bars tacked in, as you guys just saw. It looks freaking sweet. Um, I don't think I'll hit my head off it. Alex and Sam came by again, and uh, they brought something with them. So we're gonna have a little bit of bonus footage today. And we got corner scales, and we're gonna try to get a current weight of the YJ as she sits. We all have our guesses on what it weighs, and uh, Sam actually weighed his the other day, so is that gonna be in a video in your channel? No, but I'll tell you this, one tons, 40s, body, frame, pretty much roller, no engine, uh, no trans, 2,700 pounds. So, based off of his weight and what he just said, mine has the motor, the trans, and the Atlas in it right now, full cage, all that metal work I did to the floor, seats, and as it sits here, so we have our guesses. You guys go to the comments below, put your guess in, and we're gonna get this up on the weights and or the scales and see what she weighs. Did you guys put your guesses down in the comments? Because we are all very surprised. Uh, at, Sam just keeps adding weight now. I'm trying to get uh, it up closer to what I guess. <laughs> so we did put the winch box with the winch. Yeah, you know, so the winch is there, the steering ram, uh, the harnesses, the fuel cells in it now. Ultimately, Lauren came down and guessed. So again, my guess was 3,500. Alex's was 36 to 37. Sam's was 38. Lauren came in. She doesn't really know. She just threw a random guess out. She's like, I don't know, 3,000 pounds. Well, she was the dang closest because it was... Without the stuff we added on when I you know, first asked you guys to guess, we were at 3,098 pounds. With all this stuff on right now, we are sitting at 3,252. Is that what that was said? Yeah. So, look. <laughs> diff cover. Yeah, don't worry, that thing's heavy. So, just threw the diff cover on. Yeah, so 3270 is our total weight. There you guys can see the corner weights. All fairly, you know, with, you know, not too drastic from each other. <laughs> but all of us were very surprised. That is uh, much lighter than we thought. We thought doing the floor and, yeah, I don't know. We thought it was going to be much heavier, but... It's not a bad thing. I'm super happy that it's at that weight currently because there's not much more weight that needs to be added. I mean, we got fluids and all the engine components. And so we'll say roughly another thousand to 1200 pounds, but that should still put me at 4,500 around there, which is my target weight. So, so that, that's pretty cool. It's a cool little bonus footage to this video to see some weight here, but I'm happy. Stopped raining, the guy has left, and the Jeep is gone. Well, not really. I just had it pulled out because it's sunny out now. I think that's going to be the end of this video. Uh, I talked about I was going to add those two other tubes off the harness bar down to the B to C connectors. But honestly, I don't know if I'm going to like that. So for now, I'm going to hold off because I can always add them later. So with that, the Jeep's outside, so we can get a nice walk around of how the cage looks. So let's go check her out. So it is really bright outside now, but I am loving this freaking cage. It turned out 
so sweet, better than what I envisioned it in my head, and I am just extremely happy. So I think for now, that gets the main structure complete, and I can actually go on from here. Let me know in the comments below what you guys think, because again, I've never built a cage before, but I think for my first time, it turned out pretty rad. And it's everything I wanted. Now, next up with the cage, obviously I gotta do the full burn in, weld all the joints together. I still gotta add the gussets. I gotta add grab handles up to the front. So there's still a lot that needs added and done with the cage. Also, I still have to do my tie-ins to the frame. So where all the A, the B, and the C all came at the body, I'm gonna have them connected to the frame. So I gotta work on that next as well. But ultimately, the cage is pretty much done. And now I can move on to the next projects on the, y, on the YJ and then uh, get one step closer to having this thing running and on the trail. Super pumped, super happy. And yeah, with that, I'm gonna close this video out. I appreciate you guys watching. I know there was a delay in the YJ content, but now I'm back at it. So hopefully the videos will keep coming more at a regular pace. Thank you guys again. I'm going to throw the drone up in the air so we can get some sweet shots of this and we'll go from there. All right. See ya.